How rugged and reliable is the Starlink system? Could it run a ring doorbell 4 for 30 days, over 150 feet from the router? Could it do that while virtually in the elements, with only a small plastic IP54 rated box that you can buy for around $20 on Amazon, housing the router? Let's put the system together. First, let's connect the dish to the router. You should hear an audible click. Next, let's attach the router to the power source. Again, you should hear an audible click when you insert the cable into the router. Then you run the cable to your power source. This box is rated as providing IP54 protection, the same level of protection as the router has itself. IP54 protection rated means that it can take a hose being fired at it for three to five minutes directly. So it's a pretty solid level of protection. So the box can maintain that and the router itself can maintain that while being inside the box. We are emphasizing the ring doorbell because of its distance from the router and its ability to serve as a record of how well Starlink worked. Kim was standing close to the router at about 150 feet away to give you an idea of the distance. Remember, Starlink works like any internet from the router. You can watch YouTube and even make calls and text with it. Here are examples of the system working in different conditions. The system uptime was easily 98%, 98% plus. It worked in a wide variety of conditions. It worked in wind over 50 miles per hour, some of the strongest winds that we've had in years. It worked in soaking rains. It worked in sub-freezing temperatures. It worked. One of the biggest things with Starlink is it has to be able to see the satellite, so line of sight. Starlink provides a smartphone app that will help determine if your area is right. But if you were happen to be in a dense forest, you would have to get creative on making it work. It needs to be able to see the satellite in order to function. And without it, you're going to have a very, very difficult time of making the Starlink system work for you. Another consideration is your power sources. You could, of course, plug it in the grid, but if that's not available, you may have to rely on a solar system or some kind of storage system to maintain it. But this would work just as well as plugging in any other item. It doesn't really draw a huge amount of juice, so it should be viable. 
even if you would have to operate under certain times a day or for 30 minutes to an hour a day. I don't see power as being a big, big impediment, but it is a consideration. Another thing you have to consider is your Wi-Fi signal strength. So this kind of comes down to distance and impediments to the signal. So distance, you have what's called the inverse square law. So when you double the t distance from the router, you're only going to get a fourth of the juice. If you triple the distance, you're only going to get a ninth, and it goes so on and so on. So the further from the router you go, the less juice you're going to get. Then you have impediments. If you were to stay in a barn dominium and try to power a ring doorbell or try to have a ring doorbell function 150 feet from you, it's probably not going to happen. So a lot depends on the type of environment you're in and the walls and things, metal, stuff that may block your signal. So those are considerations you may want to look into as well. And last, we'll talk about price and service quality. My service is best effort service. So in other words, you get a second tier priority. And that's because there's already several users in the area. So I fall under best effort. So eventually, I believe the goal is for them to have everybody at the same level at more of a top tier level. But that's not the case now. So you may not get as good a service, a good a quality signal as good as rationing a service as people who first came into the system also there's price the price of or the cost of my service now is 110 dollars a month and it was 100 so it it can change and it can change with very limited notice so you have to look at those things and consider all the things i've talked about and see if the service is right for you now do i enjoy the service yes is it good for me yes would I recommend it? I would. But you have to look at your circumstances to figure out whether or not you want to use the system because that's what's important.